Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Hello and good morning. We are back on schedule. It's Thursday. I've been off for three whole days. It's been nice and wonderful, but it's back to regular schedule and routine, which is good also. And yes, I beat my coworker to work. Mr. Shans, I was thinking about this on the way in this morning because I know Mr. Shans had told me he kind of misses the updates on me beating my coworker to work. Um, so there's like a hundred people here where I work, and he and I are usually just the first two to show up. It's not like when I was talking about it before I beat my coworker. It sounds like there's only two of us that work here. No, there's like a hundred of us that work here. So, uh, yeah, and I think I have finally just beaten him into submission because it's, it's way past, uh, normally we would both show up at like 520 or, you know, we would try to be here at 520 or whatever. Now it's like 528 and he's still not here. So he's been showing up later and later and later. So I think I finally beaten him into submission that I am the queen of showing up and being the first one here to work. <laughs> All right, moving on. We, let's see. Let's go over to the X feed. I have a bunch of stuff I want to talk about over here. Where do I start? Oh, my goodness. Um, all right. This trans won't. Okay, here we go. From the New York Post. We'll start with this one. Transgender woman, man, guns down parents in Utah home, sparking massive manhunt police. <laughs> So, okay, New York Post cannot seem to use the correct and factual words to describe a man. They have to say transgender woman. However, they also, in the same headline, said sparking massive manhunt. If they really wanted to be, you know, up on the wokeness, they would say sparking massive transgender woman hunt. Would they not? Okay. A transgender woman, man allegedly gunned down her, his parents inside their Utah home Tuesday night, according to police and reports. Mia Bailey, whom police said wears wigs and changes his appearance frequently, was cornered and arrested Wednesday after an extensive manhunt that spanned several hours. Now, keep in mind, I am changing the pronouns to the correct and factual pronouns, where the article still uses the pronouns she and her to describe this man who likes to wear, you know, dresses and wigs. So cops warned he was to be considered armed and dangerous while he was still on the loose. We have some good news. Officer Tiffany Mitchell with the St. George Police Department announced on Facebook. We have the suspect in custody. Everyone is safe. No one was, no one else was injured. Bailey, 28, was immediately identified as the primary suspect after gunfire erupted around 7 p.m. in a home in Washington in southwest Utah near the Arizona border. Uh, the bodies of a woman and man, both suffering gunshot wounds, were found in the living room, according to the Washington City Police. The investigators launched a manhunt for the suspect who fled in a yellow Kia Soul. After several hours on the loose, Bailey was cornered in the St. George neighborhood, roughly seven miles from the home where the murders took place. Video shows the suspected killer peacefully surrendering to a dozen armed officers. Police said he put down a firearm before being cuffed. Wow. Although police did not make clear the relationship between the deceased and Bailey, records show that Bailey shared the home where the slaughter occurred with a Joseph and Gail Bailey, ages 70 and 69. Gail's brother took to social media to confirm that the pair's killer, killer was their child. All right, so there you go. And there's no motive that has been revealed of the killings, but, you know, we all know that these people are not stable. So, yeah. All right, whistleblower nurse claims FBI threatened her after she accused Children's Hospital of illegally billing taxpayers for transgender medicine. All right, this is also from the New York Post, written by Jenny Tayer. 
a whistleblower who accused the nation's largest children's hospital of illegally billing taxpayer taxpayers for transgender medicine for kids claims that FBI agents showed up to her house to intimidate her for speaking out. Vanessa Savage, Savage, who is a nurse at Texas Children's Hospital, this is all in Texas, that is supposed to be a red state, remember, but it's really not, uh, said that alleged feds promised they would make life difficult for her and that she was not safe at work after she started speaking out about the facility's gender-affirming care practices. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is investigating her allegations. A spokesperson for his office told the Post. Savage told conservative journalist Chris Rufo that the hospital was billing gender-affirming care to Medicaid. And yes, I believe this. Texas law prohibits the use of taxpayer funds for such gender-affirming care for children. It is evident that the hospital continues to believe it is above the law, not just by concealing the existence of their transgender medicine program from the public, but by stealing from the federal government, she said. Two weeks later, Rufo reported the men who identified themselves as FBI agents showed up at her door and accused her of breaking federal privacy laws. They threatened me, she told Rufo. uh, They promised they would make my life difficult for me, If I was trying to protect the leaker, they said I was not safe at work and claimed that someone at my workplace had given my name to the FBI. In her conversation with Rufo, she also alleged that one doctor she worked with took an uncritical approach to providing medical intervention for children who said they wanted transition to another gender. He is extremely encouraging of their transition and will essentially do whatever can whatever he can to make sure that they are happy, at least externally happy. Okay, wow. This article goes on and on. If you care to go finish reading that when you can. So this next story is, you know, George Santos, right? Well, apparently he now has an OnlyFans page and he's already posted content written by David Proper from the New York Post. He really has no shame. Disgraced former lawmaker George Santos is now on OnlyFans. Santos announced his latest endeavor on Wednesday, weeks after he launched a cameo account to raise funds for his lavish lifestyle and legal defense. The moment you've all been waiting for, Santos claimed on X. (laughs) Uh, Only on OnlyFans will you get the full behind-the-scenes access to everything I'm working on. Santos, who used to represent the district that includes Long Island and Queens, has desperately tried to garner attention for himself after he was expelled from Congress last December in light of fraud charges brought against him by federal prosecutors. The Republican, in a follow-up post, made clear the OnlyFans account does not have adult-only content. He also admitted it was just a stunt to make a buck. I decided to go with OnlyFans because I wanted to stir the pot. Folks need to stop being so sensitive, he said. On the OnlyFans page, he shared on social media, it promises fans or just curious onlookers exclusive, never-before-seen content of the congressional icon and much more. Eek. I don't know what that means. Now, if he's doing a tell-all, that would be kind of interesting, but I don't want to see him dressed in drag or anything else or whatever he does and sexualized whatever no thank you but if you want to do a tell-all by all means put it out there okay next up we're going to do one more story and then we're going to do a dear abby so sea world mime reveals shock reason he was fired after 36 years i found this on the daily mail uh, site this is so sad a much loved professional mime who entertained SeaWorld visitors for 36 years, has shared his heartbreak after suddenly being fired from his job. So is this in Florida or is this in Cal? I think it's in Florida. But when Lynn arrived at work recently, he says he was scolded by a security guard for riding his bike as he'd done for many years. A disagreement ensued, which ultimately cost him his job. Lynn claims he wasn't given an opportunity to tell SeaWorld bosses I'm trying to figure out, was this in Florida or is this in California? Not that it matters, but uh, let's see. In May, 
Lynn says he parked his car in the lot and then picked up his bicycle to ride into the amusement park as he would do any other day. As I ride my bike through the security guard, I see some security ladies that I've seen quite a few times over the years and just said good morning, he said in a video online. And I got my on my bike and rode away. And as I rode away, I heard some gentleman yell at the top of his lungs, hey, come here. The mime artist later revealed that the man who yelled was another security guard who told Frey, you're not allowed to ride your bike in this park. Frey recalled replying, excuse me, I've been riding my bike in and out of this park for years. After a few minutes of back and forth, Frey says the security guard ordered him to park his bike in a quarter and walk instead. According to the artist, the security guard went to HR and reported that Frey cussed at him and threw his bike. But the longtime professional has refuted these allegations and claims he did not swear at the guard and throw his bike. I did not cuss at him. Everybody out there knows me and knows that I wouldn't do that, he says. I don't cuss at people. I don't have that in me. That's not in my nature. If you push me hard enough, yeah, I might say something. He didn't push me that hard. The conversation wasn't that tense. Lynn says he went to work for two more days and then received a call from his boss, a third-party company employed by SeaWorld, saying he was fired. Not only this, but Lynn was told he is banned from the SeaWorld property. He said the HR department never asked him to provide a clarification on the matter. So, SeaWorld never let me tell my side of the story. They just judge, jury, and executioner that quick. 36 years at SeaWorld. Evidently, that means nothing to them, he said. Wow, he spent 36 years at SeaWorld as a beloved mime, and he gets fired over this incident. I asked them if I could come in and do one last show. They said no. I asked if I could come in and tell my side of the story. They said no. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry, folks. Since being fired, the artist's daughter has launched a GoFundMe to help support his new company, the Mime Company. He also received ample support from his TikTok community, with many demanding a response from SeaWorld. Wow. Okay, well, there you go. But that's out on my X feed if you want to go read that. And now we're going to do a Dear Abby from the New York Post. So here we go. Dear Abby, a bride maid, a, oh, sorry, a bride asked me to be her maid of honor. I barely know her. Dear Abby, I was asked to be a maid of honor in a friend's wedding. I did not consider us to be close friends, but she has no sisters and few girlfriends. She seemed desperate and told me I was the only one who could fit this role, so I obliged. Now it's my turn to be the bride. I have other girlfriends I am closer to that I would like to ask to be my bridesmaids. I feel guilty for not returning the favor. She's invited to the wedding but I don't want her to be in my wedding party. I also feel awkward having to tell her she isn't as close to me as the other girlfriends I want. How do I let her down gently without hurting her feelings? Not close in the West. Ooh, I don't even know how to answer this one because I am not good at this type of confrontation. And to me, that would be kind of like a confrontation. I'd have to tell somebody, no, maybe just ignore it. Maybe don't even say anything at all. Maybe. <laughs> Just go ahead and pick your bridesmaids and go on about your business and just kind of like, oh, you know, just kind of forget about it. All right, let's see what Dear Abby says. Dear Abby, my cat, what? Oh, wait, sorry. Dear Not Close, <clears throat> why are you feeling guilty? Having served as the woman's maid of honor, <clears throat> excuse me, does not obligate you to have to be, wait. So, yeah, she's going on the lane, same track that I was thinking. Why are you feeling guilty? Having served as the woman's maid of honor does not obligate you to have her be part of your own wedding. A way to let her down gently would be not to mention the subject at all. <laughs> I told you, if she brings it up, explain that you invited her because you want her there to share in the happiness, period. So, I was right. I was right. Okay. All right, that's it. That's all I've got for now. Oh, I need a, the question of the day. I do have a good question of the day, I think. So, um, I want to know what you think was the most iconic and most epic ending to a TV television series. My first thought, my first 
few thoughts, my okay, is MASH. That was a very iconic, epic, very last episode, season finale. There was another one, too, that I was thinking about. Oh, yeah. So, we're, you know, we're watching New Heart. We're on season eight. And, you know, I already know all about the season finale. I thought that was probably a good season finale end of the show. I'm talking about not just this. Not, I'm not talking about just a season finale. I'm talking about the end of the show, period, as in there's not going to be any more shows ever. And again, I think MASH ranks up there. I think the Bob Newhart one ranks up there. Or the Newhart one, where he's at the innkeeper. Um, maybe Cheers, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, I don't know. what. I want your opinion. What do you think? What do you think the all-time ending of the TV series ever? Uh, what is your most... Remember, memorable one, epic one, iconic one. Okay, I gotta go. Thanks for listening. Bye. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy.